Hi guys, Dorota Palinska International, new artist and educator here and I'm in with Teresa today and I decided to record, so the design is nothing fancy, just the swirly bits which are pretty popular actually at the moment and I think they look cute but the main reason why I wanted to record this video because I would count it as a problematic nails, they're really short and you can kind of see it, we have made it pretty nice transformation so I have left, left two nails on each hand uh, obviously because we have done the process so we have sanitized her hands and my hands and uh, now we can move on to the next step. So I'm dehydrating the nail plate. I don't want to bring any extra nail oils into this nail plate because it's such a short nail plate that I have no room for a mistake for them to last, okay? Pushing back the cuticles. So I'm just pushing back the cuticles and then scratching the surface of the natural nail. Like making sure there is no shiny places and if you prep your nails really well they are going to last did you have extensions done before i asked you that yeah. yes you did how long do they last you normally about three and a half weeks three and a half weeks okay so normally when i'm getting a client with so short like when the nails are so short i usually advise and this is the safe option advice that they are going to last about two weeks and if the nails are kind of average ish uh, then i say three weeks and then nice nails last four weeks extremely beautiful nails last five weeks so it's better to say shorter time than disappoint your clients so i'm glad they have lasted about three and a half weeks uh, in general and i hope they will last three and a half weeks as well but i would <laughs> say two weeks for for this condition dehydrate again and then an extra nail dehydrator and then we can apply the tips I'm not going to go for the extreme pinch tips, I will just go for the coffin shape tips and I can give you guys the links uh, of them as well in the description of the videos. Um, wait for it to dry and then we are going to apply the tips. And when we are applying the tips, like you can see it, the shape of the nail, so the pocket is rounded and we need to leave the space empty. You, you cannot apply the tip over it, um, you just need to leave the space empty here and make sure like the tip kind of click. So I'm just going to show you that I think this will be the right size. So what I mean by that is, so the full coverage I've gotten here, but I need to go a little bit lower because otherwise the tip is not, the nail is not going to fit in into the pocket. I'm always cutting the corners just to make the application of the tips easier. Brush in the glue one side, other side, and then we are going to apply the tips. And applying the form on those nails would be extremely difficult and quite often you would guys have some breakage on the corners uh, because you would need to really cut out the form to the extreme. Uh, I find it like on the tips the nails last pretty good as well. And then eventually the natural nail grow. Uh, so we can just carry on and rebalance and then they are all nice and pretty. So that's the next one. And I don't do the e-file on the cuticles until I apply the tips. Because when the nails are so short, there might be some places where it will be extremely difficult for me to reach with the hand filing. So I would use the e-file to maybe blend the corner of the tip. Or you can also see it, I'm kind of really strongly pressing those tips down. Just to make sure like they are going to attach really well. Because sometimes when the finger can push away the tip so i'm holding also it with my finger down the way and then i'm going to place the tip if you struggle this way you can also ask the client to lift your finger up so push your thing keep pushing your finger up there we are and this way you've got a really good contact uh, with the pocket of the tip we don't need to do that but that would be in a case if you would have a lots of finger um the tip of the finger um kind of pushing away the tip so the tip is not going to attach really well. So I'm sliding the tip down, pushing the finger down the way with my left hand so it doesn't disturb the tip sticking into the nail plate. Okay, that's that's the main tips I would give you guys when it comes to really uh, biting nails. 
maybe they not really like I, I have done worse like much 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 worse and I'm hoping actually this lady will I'm gutted but I was so busy I couldn't record it guys for you to show you like an amazing transformation like but her nails are really really difficult so she laughed because she comes from Glasgow she laughs that uh, she will make a trip again uh, just so we can record the video uh, for you uh, too on those uh, set of the nails. Now you have to wait for the glue to set and bond with the natural nail a little bit. So that's the time when I'm going to do a little bit of those cuticle work. So I'm just taking the spike bead 12, the speed is. And we are going to remove any tissue from the nail plate. The cuticles here aren't too bad, um, but quite often when the nails are short and biting, we have to trim the cuticles because they are on the nail plate. So that will be the time when I would trim the cuticles before I apply the uh, gel. You guys seen me like doing the cuticle work after I have completed all the filing. But in a case, if I've got lots of cuticle on the nail plate, of course, I will have to trim them uh, before the gel application. Like so at this stage I'm removing all the cuticles from the nail plate and then like here in the corner I'm also going to catch the tip as well okay so I'm just blending those tip too because you want to have a natural nail you don't want to have those plastic where the water can enter as well you want to have it sealed with the gel and if you do seal it with the gel it is going to nice nicely last because the gel like you kind of treated this tip as a first layer of your uh, gel on the sculpting form So I need to get rid of those tip in a corner here and with the file It will be very hard to reach it without of hurting the client Now it's the time to trim them So I'm just cutting And now we can shape them. So one side, other side. Don't blend the tip until you shape it because then you kind of make it really weak. So I'm shaping my coffin shape first, free edge, and now I can blend the difference. So I'm going all over first. And now blending the difference. Pull down those new folds and blend the difference. Next one, one side, other side, all over. Like make sure you get rid of the tip from the corners, not sore. My lady is always shy when we do recording. <laughs> and then the same on the other hand. So one side, other side. Free edge. Try and relax your hand a bit. Perfect, thank you. Blend that difference. And then one side, other side, and then we are going to use the gel. So in this case, because we are painting the design on top of the sculpting gel, I'm going to go for the most coverage, which is the dark nude. Remove the dust and after we remove the dust, you can inspect the nail if there is any place you don't feel 100% happy about. So just touch them up and I usually do it with the corner of the file. And now we're ready for a gel application. So dehydrate again. 
but we only dehydrate the new nail plate you do not dehydrate the tip there is no need of dehydrating the tip so only the nail plate an extra nail dehydrator like making sure it only goes on the natural nail plate so I'm working more on the side because there is only a very little of the nail plate universal air bond which gives a good adhesion of the gel again only on top of the natural nail And then we can scope, like we can apply the gel on those nails. So I'm using the dark nude. I actually can show you in a pot as well. And then my oval gel brush. And actually those gel brush, the, the shape of the brush is fantastic for those type of nails as well. Because you've got more control over the product. And it's, you can get really nicely around the cuticle area without of flooding it. So nice and thin layer. Just so I've got contact like with the nail plate, like really well massage it in. Pull those nail folds down so you can cap the corners of the tips, like to make sure there is no um and then inside. So there is no uh, places where you've got the tip not covered with the gel. Like you have to make sure it is all covered. and now we are going to apply the structure so nice and thin layer again and this is going to be enough product on the sides at the very end of the free edge and around the cuticle area if you would do too heavy nails on such a small nail plate they wouldn't last like they would be too heavy and they they will lift uh, so always remember that that's because the nail bed actually I'm going to show you quickly guys so the nail bed is very small in here and if you put your apex in here it's not going to be holding these extensions you really need to put this apex quite close to the cuticle but at the same time you wanted it to be nicely blended so i'm picking up a small scoop of the product direct the client kneel down place as close to the cuticle as you can but kind of having those nice transition and then work down the way change okay same on this one so pull it nice that's you've got product everywhere nice and thin layer pick up the scoop for the apex remove it from your brush and now work down the way And then same on this one so nice and thin nice and thin covering everywhere capping those free edge and then the structure remove it from your brush i'm trying to be slow with the application so you can guys see it I didn't apply the nail and uh, the product through the entire nail because there is no point. I want to get it at kind of coffin shape, not the square shape. So I'm going to file it more on the sides. That's why I don't apply too much product there. Change. And then the pinky. So scope of the product for the apex. one side other side help yourself like i'm twisting a client finger as well so i'm kind of working both uh, um, brush and the client kneel this way you you work faster change and now the gel needs to cure in 60 seconds so this hand slide on top <laughs> then we have to just shape it and do the nice design so when the client's nails are curing to save the time i'm just going to quickly prepare my paints and we are going to put them in here. So the color I'm going to use is an 50, no, 109. It's a new perfect collection from the previous gel polishes. So I'm just putting a small amount of this color in here. 
plus paint on French gel mixed with the uh, red color plus so I've got nice pink paint on French gel and then 100 uh, oh we call it 106 on our color chart as uh, 58001 fairy glow glitter so I've got my combination of the colors I can put them on the side because my hand is ready I take the right one remove the inhibition layer and just shape quickly those nails so one side other side I'm covered in a glitter now one side other side you can see it how I'm shaping a coffin shape free edge bring it higher up blend around the cuticle area bring it higher up that's it next one one side other side one side other side okay we've got coffin shape If I would put lots of product in there, it would take me much longer time to file it as well. And the product's really nicely self-level, so there is really not as much of filing. I take the other hand. And that's the way how I'm doing all the nails. So I'm constantly like, I would file all this hand, then file all this hand and do one step by step. Just because picking up your tools is really time consuming, so that's another way to save lots of time. If you're holding a nail file, do whatever you have to do with your nail file and then go back and pick up another tool rather than just like jumping from place to place. Got a little bit too thick in here, so remove the bulk, reshape it, and then the next one. This is actually a nice transformation. <laughs> Blend that out, then the buffer. So for the buffer, you have to always really watch it because buffer can can be really sharp. So I'm filing in the middle first. And once I buff it in the middle, I can go into the corners. And when buffing the corners, you have to be very gentle, especially on such a small nails. Not sure. No. Tell me or kick under the table if you would <laughs> feel anything. No, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just kind of doing those brushing away motion and working with the corners. Because this buffer is huge for so tiny nails. But we want to really nicely blend this area because if it's blended, the nails are not going to lift. And when we work with such a small nails, this is really important uh, because we want them to last. Then after I blend all that, I can do the cuticle work. And another thing why I like to do the cuticle work after I finish just before the gel polish application or the color application is it is a sensitive area and you don't want to really apply like imagine cutting all the cuticles 
and have much more sensi uh, sensitive skin in there and then applying all the blue scrubs like primers and all the things like I think those kind of skin is more prone to allergies and I never had allergic reaction when it comes to to the nails so it's just the way I do it okay we can trim those cuticles and tidy them up so they're nice and pretty as well so any bits and pieces which are sticking out but at the same time not too aggressive This is a stuff which I wouldn't be able to cut out, so I'm just giving a little file in there. And then the other hand, so a bit raggy part. Quite helpful is when you remove the dust as well because then you can see what you're doing And now is the time for the design. So just remove any dust, clean it, and let's paint them. Also, let me know, guys, what is really popular at your salons. The now. Like, actually, the swirls are the most popular designs I have been doing today. So I just moved this here. Just to make the life easier for myself, I'm going to use the um, New Perfect aqua um, Aquarel brush. Because I can paint it slightly thicker lines. So just a wee squiggles. And try to make like on each nail slightly different design. inside the lamp so same on this one so quiet in here unbelievable that's my last client like for today, so the salon is already shut. Perfect change. Then the pinky color, which we have mixed, so I'm just picking up a little bit of it. But what you could do it is for the gel polish, you could you add white to the co chosen color of the gel polish as well. That's what work too. 
So I'm just preparing my brush into the nice point. And painting another swirly design. If you would paint that with the thin brush, it would take ages. Perfect change. So clean my brush and then take a D-liner one. Paint on French gel just to add a couple white lines. I have just removed the blob of the product. Because when you pick up the gel, there is always we blob and you don't want to use it. Another tip I can give you guys if you want to paint nice thin lines hold your breath with the mask is a torture but anyway <laughs> um, don't press as hard so if you if you've got the blob of the product uh, just don't press that hard just press very gentle change and then you would leave little product if you press hard you are going to leave more product okay so I've got blob I press gentle and then I start pressing harder so this way my line is a bit more even and I also look guys my brush my hand is steady and what I'm doing is I'm twisting the client hand at the same time much easier to paint this way change and then the silver one so I each time when I'm swapping the color, I'm dipping in my brush into the color I'm going to use so my brush can absorb this color. Otherwise, you might end up like with um, the previous color visible through it as well, and you really don't want that. So yeah, I have given you all the tips and tricks um, I have used to do this set. And I hope you have really enjoyed it, watching this tutorial, that you have also learned something new as well. If you did... You have to hit the share button for me pretty, pretty please. Um, so the others can see it as well. And also, so I've got more motivation to record more videos for you as well. Because the more views we've got, the more happy I am and the more videos I want to produce. And obviously, you guys know I want to get the Wii Trophy as well once we reach 100,000 subscribers. That's so pretty change. And then the next one. I knew a line. And then we can just apply the top coat and I can show you the full final look and take a nice thumbnail picture. Change. And also swapping the hands is really useful, I think, for you because each time when you have done something good, you don't have to um, like worry that if you do something wrong, you can just easy wipe it off and the part you done good stays in. So a top coat in. 
and I'm always working pretty decent like with my top coat like and checking how the light reflects change because if there will be any places I wouldn't be happy 100% I can still improve the shape with the top coat too change yeah, so that's the final results actually pretty nice set for what we have started with <laughs> isn't it okay guys i'm sending you lots of glittery hacks and bye for now mm -hmm.